I'm pumped and excited about sharing with you guys a lot of mistakes that beekeepers make on their fall inspections. Tip number one, let's get right into it. They don't know what they're supposed to be looking for when they get in there. They just start opening up the hive and looking, not really understanding, do they need to look for something specific. Let me share three things that I want you to look for when you do your fall inspection. Also use my inspection guide when you do the inspection to help you know what to look for. But the first thing you wanna be looking for is brood. Here's an example. We're opening this hive up in the fall and we're looking for brood. We wanna know how many frames of eggs we have, how many frames of larvae, how many frames of capped over brood. That's gonna tell us how many upcoming beads of winter physiology that we have. Hey guys, be sure and watch this video all the way through because I'm gonna be announcing a live stream and I want you to be there. If you're looking for brood in your fall inspection, you're looking for all three stages of brood. That is eggs, larvae, capped over pupae. So let's break it down like this. What about capped over pupae? What, what are you supposed to be looking for there? Well, when you're looking for capped over brood, it's brood that can be emerging tomorrow. It may have been capped over a while back, or it may be emerging in 13 days. So you have a window of time between one and 13 days that the capped over brood is gonna emerge and become adult bees, bees of winter physiology, now that we're in late September. Let's talk about eggs. If you open up a hive and you're looking at a frame of eggs, they're gonna be shaped like this. They're gonna be in position of straight up and down if they were just recently laid. If they were laid yesterday, they'll be tilted over a little bit. And on day three, they become larvae. So we're talking about eggs that are either straight up in the cells, slightly tilted. Those eggs are all gonna emerge as adult bees, worker bees, in 21 days from now. You can mark your calendar by it. If you're in doing your inspection on uh, October the 1st, for example, and you see eggs sticking straight up, if all goes well, those worker bees will emerge on October the 21st or the 22nd. Now, what about larvae? A little more complicated with larvae because you're not sure what day of larvae it is, what, how old the larvae is. But typically, if you see an open cell with a larvae in it, that means that open larvae is gonna emerge as an adult bee in eight to 13 days. So you can kind of project this out with your bees of winter physiology. What you wanna do is feed your bees one-to-one -one sugar water with my additive that I showed a few videos back. That will help raise more bees of winter physiology. So you're gonna be looking at brood. Number two, mites. You don't wanna raise bees of winter physiology with a high mite count because that means you could potentially have a very high virus load. And those bees of winter physiology that live four to six months are gonna be cut in half in their lifespan and only make it two to three months. That's not gonna get you through the winter. So it's a good time to do a mite test, see what you need to do. And this time of the year, if you're living where I live, where the temperatures are pretty moderate now, highs in the 60s and 70s, and uh, you can get away with Formic Pro and other treatments like Apigard. Apigard is thymol that we're putting on and it says to put it on just like this, leave that little lid open like that. Uh, you can try to use more approaches to get your mites under control. You have time to get that taken care of. The third thing you wanna be looking for, writing notes down about what you see are resources. How many frames of capped over honey? How many frames of open nectar? How many frames of bee bread? Just gotta know how many frames of resources do your bees have to make it through winter. Now in my case, I'm gonna be feeding my bees all fall and then I'm also gonna give them my winter bee kind all winter long. I'm not so worried about it, but it sure makes me feel better when I see their own resources in the hive. How much resources should they have? If you're not gonna feed them, they need to have in a typical winter where it's gonna last a pretty strong winter, three to four months long, they need to have 60 to 80 pounds. Now, if you live in Southern states, other parts of the world or country where you have more moderate winters, then you don't need as much honey on board for them to make it through. However, keep in mind that you may live uh, in a place where your winters are mild, but your nectar sources are low and almost non-existent during the same time that I have. So in that case, your bees are still gonna need to be fed because they won't have incoming nectar. So the second tip that I wanna share with you guys on mistakes that beekeepers make on their fall inspection is that they assume that all the fall 
flowers are gonna be enough to really help their bees make up for lost time. I haven't been impressed with that. Now, some of you may live in areas where you may have good nectar sources for a while. You might think, oh, I got goldenrod, I've got other asters, and you might be excited about what you're seeing your bees do. But keep in mind, this colony is as big as it's ever been. They're eating a lot of food. And you remember what spring nectar flows look like. Probably not gonna see that in the fall as much or as long. Don't make the mistake of thinking that just because you see some flowers, that it's gonna, the bees are gonna make up for lost time. They probably need fed unless you just live in the middle of the biggest fall nectar flow in history. The third thing beekeepers make the mistake is they don't realize that robbing is such a problem in late summer or fall. On nice days when I, you can sit outside in the fall with your t-shirt on, bees are gonna be scouting around looking for a small weak colony that they can get in there and basically steal all their honey and take it back to their hive. So when you're doing your fall inspection, take the proper precautions to know what you're gonna to do to protect your boxes when you lift them off to go down to the next box to inspect. In my case, when I pull off uh, maybe a honey super, I've got a bee flying around my face, then that honey super, I'm gonna cover it up. I'm either gonna put it on a top cover with another top cover to isolate it, not letting it get too hot or suffocating my bees, but leaving it cracked a little bit. Or in my case, as you can see here, I'm using a sheet of burlap, covering it a little bit just to discourage bees from finding it or getting into it really quickly. But the best way to avoid that, know what you're gonna be looking for when you get in there, work pretty quickly, don't take a lot of time to find your queen. Make sure you see eggs, make sure you see good brood. Don't spend a lot of time having to put eyes on your queen. I don't wanna spend my time in my inspection wasting time just so I can look at my queen. I wanna spend that time evaluating the queen's performance. I don't care to see her walking around, right? Now, what I've done today before I open this hive up is I, I set up some community feeders so that my bees could go out and forage on some of my own community feeders. That's gonna get more bees out of my hive so when I inspect them, everybody's not home waiting for trouble. So my bees are going out there a little bit, getting some nectar, some sugar water. I even poured some water on a winter bee kind and uh, they love that uh, compound, the mixture that I put on those winter bee kinds. So I just poured some water on there and you can see here, they're really going out there foraging on that. So now I can open up my hives and inspect them without so many bees at home because there's not a lot out there. Even though we do have some asters and goldenrod, they're not foraging real heavily. And the final mistake that a lot of beekeepers make when they look at their bees in the fall, they're not planning ahead to feed their bees in the winter. Now, if you live in a pretty harsh climate like I do where it gets pretty cold and the winters are long, then it certainly pays to insulate your hives going into winter and it pays to feed them in the winter. I love the winter bee kinds that I give my bees. I, I really have success feeding bees. Customers have bought my winter bee kinds for many, many years and have been very happy with the results of feeding their bees in the winter. It does make for a lot of bees, but that's the only way you can heat that hive in the winter is with the heat of each single bee clustered together, making a warm hive to make it through very windy, cold days. So I'm speaking to those of you that are worried about your bees this winter. Go out there, inspect your colony, make sure you have good brood, make sure your mites are under control, make sure they have good resources, make sure you don't in induce robbing by doing this inspection. So work pretty quickly and get out of there and also start thinking about feeding your bees, how you're gonna feed them going into winter. Hey guys, I'm gonna be live streaming with Castle Hives on their live stream tomorrow night, September the 28th at seven o'clock central time. Be sure and be there. I'll leave links in the description below. You can drop in, be a part of that live stream and ask me questions, we can talk. So I hope to see you there uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock. That's a benefit of watching my videos the minute they're published. Because if you're watching this video, after the live stream, days later, you missed it. <laughs> so always uh, subscribe, click on the bell, so you'll be notified every time a hot video comes out, you can watch it instantly. I want you to calm down and watch my recent video that I made. It's a very relaxing beekeeping video. I spent a lot of time making this video and I took a different angle to help you relax as a beekeeper. Watch it, it's a lot of fun, I'll see you over there.